Hello, everybody. Let's get this strapped in. Good bear bell here. Um, cover it up so it doesn't have to jingle it yet. Um, welcome to a new video. <laughs> this is going to be an experiment. Um, I've been uh, testing uh, the idea of longer format videos recently, and that's because I had uh, some circumstances that kind of just brought it about. You know, discovering an abandoned uh, home uh, last week, and then a few weeks ago uh, on the the uh, um, on the waterfall that I was trying to endeavor to reach that just suddenly resulted in a long video. And it seems like some people are enjoying seeing longer uh, visions of this area that I explore in. So I try, just thought I'd turn the camera on right at the start. I mean, I'm really, I'm just right starting out. I'll just leave it running as long as, hey, as long as it's practical, you know? I'm all geared up. I need to take an umbrella today because I don't have my waterproof camera. Normally I don't hike with an umbrella, but um, uh, given if I want to keep things going, if the rain starts, I'm going to need it. Oop. Have the key for just a second. So here, so where are we? We're in a place, one of the first villages that I ever encountered when I began exploring in the mountains here. This is uh, um, Nagakuma, the long village of the long bear. And we're going to walk through the village now. And uh, it's one of my favorites. There's activity going on. There's a man over here uh, puttering around in his house right over here. He's got one of the more modern houses. Um, there's a woman. Um, if you can see him, oh, there's a woman there, and there's a woman over there. Oh, just you see her head peeking out of the field here, a car going by. Can you see the woman's head? <laughs> there she is. There, there, she, there she is. So there's lots of villagers doing their things here, and I don't want to disturb them too much. Sorry for the hand in the way. I don't want to disturb them too much. So we're going to pass our way, pass through quietly, as quietly as possible, talk a little bit maybe. Uh, maybe we'll encounter somebody, I don't know. I've met people here before. And um, then head into outskirts of the village, we'll pass the shrine. Um, we may go over to the bridge, and there's a bridge over the river. That might be fun to do, take a walk over the bridge, and then head over to the shrine. And then after that, there's a, there's a road, an old farm road, that is nearly abandoned. And um, uh, there are some, what I think are abandoned houses up there. I haven't been up that road in probably eight years. And it was before I started really uh, exploring in that way. So we'll leave the car here. Go ahead and uh, pop this guy on. Put my key away. Just a second, everybody. Hold on while I put my key in here. Try to look at my... <laughs> Give you something pretty to look at while I put the key in. Got to secure the key safely. Oh, and I open the door again. There we go. Uh, see, this is the kind of stuff that results and stuff that I never would have wanted to show you. My fiddling around with stuff. Okay, let's see. I've just about got myself together here. Did I really lock the door? <laughs> Good. Okay, so let's take a little accounting of where we are. The entrance to the village of the Long Bear is right over there. That car is leaving the village right now. Small little road there. You wouldn't even know this village was here. I didn't know it was here for the longest time because the road takes a left and goes over a bridge. There's a big bridge over the river there. It's hard to even know this village is here. Very narrow road. This is it. It splits forks and goes over there. There's some older houses back up there on the hillside and uh, some newer houses here by the uh, closer to the water. And uh, lots of, uh, uh, little, it's a farming village, lots of tea farms and the like. This, this tea farm is abandoned, um, it's been given up probably, maybe last year was its last season. You can see the ferns growing through it. There should be a rose through here that you, the farmer could walk through and they've given it up. And Although it looks like it may have been cut a little bit here, they're not doing a very good job of it. I think the farmer's just about done. This field is fallow, maybe waiting for another growing season. But for the most part, these areas are being given up by the farmers. I love that house over there. Very beautiful roof line. Um, up here, there's uh, you can see the clouds just uh, passing through at the top of the uh, mountain up there. Very beautiful steep cliffs up through there. Let's walk along. Some old friends of mine here. It's an old dog up around the corner up here that I sometimes see. You can see some farm implements in here. There's some onions, baskets, an old farmer's basket. They'd carry that on their shoulder. You see the uh, farming women doing it. There's straps there for the over the shoulder. Some old signs, some more. It looks like garlic, doesn't it? The sound of that bird that you're hearing is a very uh, distinct, that one right there, very distinct and sentimental. Oh, Suzume Bachi. You can see the Asian giant hornet right there. See if we can go in for a close-up shot. Get it, get it, get it, Kurt. Where is it, where is it? There's a hornet, giant hornet right there. 
I don't know if I can quite get it. I'm getting too close. Kurt, do a careful job. Right there, it's under that leaf. What you're seeing moving there is the big killer, the yak killer. This is Zunimachi, the Asian giant hornet, capable of uh, killing people who aren't even allergic to it. Quite aggressive in uh, when they attack in swarms, which they'll do if you would disturb their nests. I'm just a distance away. I've never had any of these scouts. It's hunting right now. This, this hornet may have found something there. They're looking for uh, insects to bring back to feed to the grubs in the nest. So there's a nest nearby, probably. Um, I don't know just what it's doing in there. They're pretty active. I'm, it should move any second now. I'm surprised if it stays on there too long, unless it actually found something. What are you doing down there? Sometimes when they come out, they'll, they'll fly right over at me when I get close like this. Check me out, but I've never had one attack me like this. But there's always a first time, and eh? I'm pretty darn close to the thing. We're going to hang out here as long as it takes. This is, uh, to me, this is the highlight of hiking in the Japan mountains, finding these giant hornets. Just what it's doing in there. It's in the, these are not tea plants, I don't know just what these are. Anyway, I was saying about that bird it's, uh, that you hear over my head. If you watch Japanese, an here it goes, anime or movies, You'll sometimes see people, you'll sometimes hear that sound and you know, in the movies, especially the people from the city, they get all sentimental and moody because this sound is the sound of countryside. The Japanese really, really love that sound. I love it too. I hear it a lot because I spend a lot of time out in these areas. That's a really big quarter inch stinger, barbless stinger, so it can sting repeatedly. The, um, ve the uh, venom Venom is injected, poison is ingested. The venom is uh, strong enough to dissolve human flesh. And they can spray that venom in the eyes of, an, of a threat. So you have to watch out, and then when they get you in the eyes, then that disables you from moving easily. And then the uh, rest of the swarm, they release a pheromone to draw in other hornets into the attack. Sorry to linger here so long, but this is this is exactly what I would do if I were hiking. I would just stop and watch it as long as possible. So you're actually experiencing this hike exactly the way I would. So I'll just be quiet for a second. We'll watch. We'll wait for this hornet to come out. I probably should deploy my umbrella. I'm gonna hear a thwomp in a second. The camera's getting all wet. I'll just put my umbrella here. There we go. It's still there. Can I still aim there? Now I'm getting closer. Maybe not the smartest thing. What are you doing down there? I see you under the leaf there. Huh. And I don't want to disturb it. I think it's just hiding out, hanging out from the rain there. Huh? Hmm. Well, anyway, I guess I will give up. There's well, there it is. This is close encounter with the Asian giant hornet. I don't want to disturb it, and uh, but I don't want to make you guys, force you guys to just sit and stare at this for any longer than necessary. Although, if I were alone, I would <laughs> stay there as long as it takes. More clouds up there. Okay, here we go. So over here we have uh, the speaker system. You see up above here, 
those are the speakers used by the um, community for announcements. So at five o'clock there'll be a chime that will go off, as well as uh, uh, any announcements that go there. I think that the whole nation is networked with those things, and actually uh, someone could potentially get on get on the uh, speaker somewhere in central in Japan, in, you know, in central government, and issue a broadcast to the whole nation. You know, literally broadcast through the airwaves. Isn't that an amazing thing? Let's see these speaker system up here. This is probably the volunteer fire department, I expect. Used to be they would have a bell system, you know, a, a little ladder that would climb to a tower and they would ring a, a big bell. Someone would climb up there and hammer the bell. Oh, look at the clouds moving up there. Very nice. I'm really happy to come up on a day like this. So there's more. You can see there's a woman over there. Old woman. More old farmhouses. Most of these houses are actually abandoned. Or abandoned may not be the maybe too strong a word. Deserted. There's no one living in them. And I met an old man up here some time back and I told him how how much I'd love to live in a place like this. And he, his eyes brightened up, lit up, and he said, uh, come live here. We've got plenty of empty houses. <laughs> Pleasant enough place to be sure. That one may be empty. It's hard to tell sometimes. Reposition the camera just a bit here. Somewhere up there on that hillside, there's a Buddhist uh, uh, temple and a cemetery, I've been told. But I've not been able to get close to it because I can't find a way to get to approach it easily without seemingly trespassing on people's yards. So I've never done it. So the flat, main flat part of the village is over here. Most of the empty houses are over there. The most enchanting part of the village is over here on this side to go up towards the hill a little bit. As always, there's lots of water flowing everywhere. Oh, look at that one. That's, that's a sweet home, huh? Old laundry mat, laundry uh, hanging device there. Looks like farm, farm pants and some gloves and Maybe an Ofudo above the door. That's the front door there. That attic area up there, may, they may have held silkworms up there in the, in the old days. Oh, look at more clouds. See that nice? Oh, there's a couple over there. Sitting outside there. Trying to do a little 360 degree action. There's the road up there. That's the road that leads up to uh, the mountain areas where I usually hike. I, I don't spend a lot of time down here in this area anymore. It's just not uh, wild enough for me these days. I tend to go up to the more remote areas, but just on a whim today I decided to stop here. Isn't that pretty? Just green, green everywhere. Wow. Uh, Look at the uh, wild hydrangea, or, or cultivated hydrangea. But they're growing so well now, this is the perfect time of the year for them. I just saw a head peeking over a wall at me over there, to the left. This may have been a store at one time, certainly no, no more. I'm, so, I'm certain it was a store. Up here there's a uh, old friend of mine, the dog. House up here on the left, I wonder if he's still up here. Let's take a look at the river. I've enjoyed lots of uh, fun times in that river, the beach up here where I take my family sometimes. Look how they uh, put uh, uh, a helmet on a stick out there to act as a scarecrow. <laughs> sometimes I see uh, oldsters parked right here. 
One time I met a whole group of them. Nice little chair to sit on. And, uh, hey, wouldn't that be a great place to sit? Let's kind of admire the view for a second. Let's take a seat. Ah. Pleasant. Nice place to sit, for sure. This is the kind of thing, when I, when I get older, I'm telling you, when I get older, I'm going to sit the live long day. It's kind of, uh, what is, how does it, Thoreau, Thoreau says it, you know, where I, where I sit and something about the spy the world, so does the landscape radiate from me, I'm paraphrasing poorly. <laughs> this would be a great place to do just such a thing. Well, those excavators tip usually aren't there. They must be doing some work up further up the river. Great place to see hornets, too. Well, here's a house that in the past had a dog that would sometimes visit me. Um, I mean, not in that, in that cautious way that dogs have. Now, sometimes I, I go down there with my family when I want to go to the river. If this video winds up working out, we may end up down there crossing the there's a footbridge over the river that leads to this farm over there. It's not a big abandoned farm. It's a whole compound on the side of that hill. There's a footbridge just to lead over there. And uh, if you stick with me, and if this video works out, we may end up over there at the end. Although, how much further down the road that will be, I don't know. No, no dog. Maybe the dog's inside because of the rain. Beautiful uh, rock here. Isn't that nice? Maybe it's starting to come down a little harder. These are grinding stones. Grinding stones. The pipes. Maybe they're not grinding stones. Hmm. Got a culvert path there for the garden. There's water here. I love that sound. Berries of some sort. Hmm, I smell a fire. Someone's burning over stuff. Look at that house over there. Uh, it's not a grinding stone, it's just some sort of concrete piping or some sort. Mmm, yeah, someone's got a fire going. Oh, I can see the smoke. See behind this house? You can see the smoke rising? Probably a farmer burning his waste products. Maybe a woman, most likely a man. Look how dilapidated that is. It's an old farmer's, you know, outbuilding. There's the uh, shutter. There's the recess area where the shutter, wooden shutters would go, but... I doubt that they get open or closed anymore. Glass paned windows. A little bit broken there. Sometimes if you look carefully you can spot hornet nests under the eaves. I see none. Beautiful wall there. Nice little stone garden area here. Probably used for vegetables in the past, but now just flowers. Lovely. Green tea over there. And can you see a little uh, Kamidana shrine over there? It's a godhouse. For this particular house, they would have. Uh, there's, a, there's a god uh, usually in the garden, and a god in the, the house. So they would have had one in the house as well as one out there. And where the location is important. Look at in terms of the, it's kind of a feng shui type of a thing. These are these of course are green tea, cultivated tea. And uh, up here, these stone terraces hold more tea farms, tea fields. Look at the water uh, flowing from the uh, stone culvert there. Here's an old uh, laundry pole without a companion, laundry pole rack, but there's no other side to it. Oh, there it is, right there. So they would uh, do their laundry and hang it out here, but no one's been uh, doing that for a while. Maybe they have. Look, I see. It looks like someone's been walking here, stepping upon the stone, walking over there. They probably are still doing their laundry there. Lovely flowers. One of the great things about hiking in the rain in the mountains is that there's usually very few people out and you can kind of uh, get a better feel for things. Look at this house, wow. I never quite understood what these bamboo poles for under the eaves like that. Oh, look back there. See the little stone wa walkway up to the fields? And up there somewhere is where the burning is happening. Where's that smoke rising from? I think there's a burn basin up there. Look at that, I wonder what that is. Up here a little further, there's a Jizo. A little roadside Jizo. Let's take a look around here. See more of that uh, farm across the river. 
and you can just barely spy a bit of the uh, footbridge. There it is. Sometimes you see uh, old women walking across that with huge bundles of farm products on their backs. I thought it goes right over the river. It's very picturesque. Well, if this hike uh, continues, if everything works out, then we'll probably end up there. Down there is a little gate ball field, a little park area for the village. Beautiful cherry trees here. Imagine, they must be so beautiful. There's up there in the mountains up there. There's up in that direction up there, there's an abandoned, an entire abandoned house further up there that uh, uh, furnished and everything with this. Wow, look at this place. And over there, you can see the uh, laundry hanging just inside. All old people clothes. I don't know, I don't know necessarily what old people clothes are, but you don't see the colorful, bright colors and uh, pat patterns that children tend to like. Because there really are a few children up there. It's a farm shed. Butterflies. The plane in the clearing up there, flying about. We've moved on. And further up, this line leads up to a Oh, uh, when that leads up to a pole, but there are farms up there, I suspect. This is the house next to the Jizo. Look at how the top up there, how it kind of curves in at the bottom. I've never understood just why that is, but these older houses tend to do that. They're vertical, and then they curve down at the bottom, almost making them like a wave. You can see the same effect right here. See the bottom, how it curves like that? And this, uh, you've probably heard me say this before, this uh, blackened wood, this charcoal. They uh, run the wood, this is unfinished wood, and they run it through a charcoal uh, you know, process to char the wood to make, basically help preserve it against rot. And also to, it helps with the, uh, the charcoal helps with the humidity, it absorbs moisture somehow. You can see that there's the uh, recess where the shutters would go, and the shutters are all deployed here, closing this off. And likewise here, here are all the uh, shutters out, but they would recess back in there. That's pretty job. Well, today this day. Wow. This building is old, right? It's old. Oh, yes. This is a style of old style, right? Yes. Oh, it's interesting. Where did you come from? I came from America. So, today I'm going to take a look at it. So, I'm going to take a look at it. Where is it? Where is it? What is it? It's a big one. 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 Yes. わかりました。後では、ですかあとで、山道ずっと。そう、山道。あ、そうですか。わかりました。お、綺麗ですね。ここは、あ、あ、く、あ、長、長熊、長熊？長熊。ああ。今は上手です、ね。お、あれ、あれがそうですか。ありがとう。わ、でも、日本の、あ、の、日本、日本、日本の田舎大好き。だからいつも休みない日、一人であちこち行く。<笑>ちょっとの会話の会話ぐらいは言えるんだけどあんまり使わないんです。<笑>そうですか。じゃあ、あ、すみませんありがとうございました。<笑>ありがとうございました。さよなら。Here's the Jizo. She probably saw me walking by. Here's the Jizo statues here. Very very worn. I hear something that sounds like. Kid stuff up there. Oh, look at that old farm shed up there. Uh, I hear. Do you hear that? It sounds like some. Maybe maybe kids. It's Sunday, so sometimes the families come up from the city to visit the oldsters. That may be what that's all about. Well, guys, I think I'm going to move a little faster through the village now. Look at oh, look at the bamboo up there. Just like it's like a fountain of bamboo. Now that house up there is a strange house. That sound is coming from that house. Sometimes in Christmas time, the house is all lit up with Christmas lights, <laughs> and and I can hear Christmas music sometimes. I should have recorded that on film. Now I came up here for New Year's Eve this last year, and I saw that. It was really a weird feeling. Look at this big rock holding this down. It was a really that's for the bath probably right there, um, or or for the toilet. I'm gonna move a little faster now. I think that the villagers are on to me, and uh, people here have a very very fine sensitivity. I think there's nobody lives here. This is one of the empty houses. People up here have a very, very fine sensitivity to when a stranger is passing through. Something I've noticed in the years. And um, once I've been spotted, typically, um, and this is an abandoned house right over here for sure. Look at that place back there. And once I've been spotted, typically, then I start to note eyes on me all over. And I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable. 
and especially when I'm filming them, I like filming the village, so I'll pass through, we're almost on the other side now. Here's a more modern house. We're almost at the edge of the village, and uh, we'll pass on through and commence up the uh, mountain trail a little further. There's that. When we come back, we'll go that way, through the tea fields and down to the river, if we make it back that way. And I, there's, that's, so that's the closest I can find to getting up to the cemetery and temple that's up there, but I have to go down this path, which just feels too like I'm pass, trespassing if I don't do it. This is a family that I featured in the video of mine a long time ago. They met us, a friend and I have hiking up here. So they have the onions hanging, and they invited us inside. Look at the farm hat and farm implements. They invited us inside. I got a whole tour of that house, and we made mochi together. It's featured on a, a video long, long ago on this channel. I can't remember the name of anymore. Look at all this stuff. And I thought that they were all, I thought they had died. There's a beautiful garden over here with natural gravity feed water. Maybe you can hear it. Can you hear it? And then the pool. But I'm not going to linger this time. Okay, I, should, I hate it. I hate, you know, the people up here are so generous and kind and tolerant and patient. And I never want to trespass on that generosity. So I, that's one of the reasons that I'm a, such a bad representative or cameraman up here because I, I, I turn the camera off typically. Like, for example, it's really, 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 really almost impossible for me to ever hear me talking to anybody up here because I ne invariably turn the camera off because I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable, but I left it on there. So <laughs> it's pretty strange to actually, to actually film that kind of an event. I tried not to film, photograph her until the very end, just give her a little glimpse of her. She seemed comfortable. Hey, there's me. I'm, I'm certainly comfortable. These terraces up here. <clears throat> continue along. This is the place where you'd find Suzumi Bashi for sure. Coming in here in this kind of a sunlit area. Uh, giant spiders as well. Great place to find that. And here's the, uh, the shrine. The Shinto shrine. One of the most picturesque Shinto shrines I've ever encountered anywhere in Japan. Look at that. This, uh, these steps have fe been featured several times in Softy Papa videos. And as well as on other channels. My daughter and her friends playing uh, games on the stairs. Uh, I think there's a, sh a video called, uh, you know, Children Playing at a Shinto Shrine. Shows Emily when she was much younger with her little girlfriends playing here. I've been here with, brought visitors here and uh, many things. And I've always gone through and kind of narrow way to make my way through. And I'm going to do something different this time. I'm just going to do something. I'm going I'm to shut my mouth and give you a walking tour of the shrine in a way I've never done before. And let you just experience it the way that I first experienced it when I first came here. No, this is not the torii from the, the that is the trademark of the part of the, uh, you know, and the um, opening credits of this channel. It's not, this, it looks kind of like it, but it's not. That's further up the mountains and that torii has fallen and is, is gone now. It's, it's rotted away. This one's concrete, no last more. So I'll be, I'll just tell you a few things real quick before we enter and then I'll be quiet. You'll, you'll see some uh, great stump at one point where the uh, massive sacred tree had fallen and it's very nice because there's a new tree sprouting out of that. These, this is a sacred tree here. There's a small dump right behind this tree where the villagers would deposit their religious items and I'll focus in on that. Sometimes you can see Daruma items and Shinto items from the home and they'd, it's a holy area so they don't want to just throw their holy goods from the home away. They put it in a sacred uh, pile. And there's the shrine uh, um, gate and there's a shrine now, uh, like a little seated area there where, you, where villagers can come and sit during the festival and the main shrine itself. And I'm going to try to be quiet. We'll peek over the edge of the cliff down at the river and then I'll resume talking when we, when we get out. I'll, I'll see how, if I can keep that up. <laughs> Here we go.
Oh, there we did it. We passed through the shrine. Now let's make our way into the uh, mountains on the uh, old farm road here. Like I said before, one of the most picturesque and uh, lovely shrines I've ever seen. Let's recap a little bit. Did you see the little uh, uh, trash pile, a religious holy items trash pile? Included a little Menekineko statue. There were a couple of doll heads. Those are from the uh, from Girls' Day displays. There were other things very deeper. It's hard to get a good look at it. Last year there were a lot more items there. They kind of biodegrade back into the system, except for anything made of plastic, of course. The, near the end there we saw a burn pile. Often the, uh, it's called the Dendanyaki. I think I'm saying, I hope I'm saying it right. And that's where they would uh, often burn the religious items. Great place to see uh, spiders right through here. Do you see the one spider, the spider skin? It was a giant huntsman spider on its way to becoming a giant. It was probably about you know, half size when it shed that skin. And um, getting bigger, some more pra crawling around on that shrine. You can see the giant uh, sacred tree that had collapsed. There's a few houses over here. Do you see these? I don't know if anybody lives there anymore. They're starting to, this is a comp, this would be basically classified as a compound. I suspect someone still lives there, but activity seems to be diminishing in the recent years. Not that I get up here too much, I typically go the other way, but clouds, lovely clouds. Wow, look at that beautiful river down there. Usually this river is crystal clear. Absolutely as clear as, as clear as uh, ice water. I think this ice water can be muddy. <laughs> Don't know where this goes. I've often wondered about it. It looks like a trail that's been used. Sometimes there are um, little trails that lead from one village to the next, sometimes to a farm. I'm not sure. It needs to be explored. Probably something I'll never get to, given that I'm planning to leave Japan. Hello. Well, technically, well, artistically, <laughs> Artistically, oh, that sounds too highfalutin. Um, aesthetically, this should probably be the end of this particular video. Um, I'm, I'm making this little clip, you know, probably about another 30 minutes or so into it after, after the point that you're at right now. And not a lot happened. But I'm going to go ahead and include the whole remainder of the clip in there more. This will probably be a pretty long video. But I'll just tell you that, um, that in terms of interest, um, in terms of the type of thing I would typically show on this channel, it's probably the main part is ended just about now as we leave the shrine. But if you're curious, if you if you just you know you really want to keep on going trucking with me, you're welcome to do so. I'll uh, I'll let it in the remainder after this. Uh, well, it's mostly just me walking along this uh, this road here. Um, not a lot to see. I'm stopping to eat a little snack. Getting a little hot, a little tired. But it's a, but it's but it's fun anyway. It's just, it's the type of real stuff that I do. You know, it's the stuff that doesn't typically make it on the channel because it's uh, usually the, the, the stuff that makes a video is the highlights. So what the heck, I might as well include the, the, the you know, the, the, other, the rest in if you want. But this is just to let you know if you're, if, you're, if all you wanted to do is see the, you know, the village and the shrine, that's done. The rest is kind of just me, you just been walking with me in the woods. But who knows what will happen after that. After I, after I do this clip, I'm going to head on back down, maybe across the, uh, across the bridge and um, go see what else that happens. So who knows what will be on beyond that, but just to let you know. Take care, everybody. Have a great. If, if you're done, if you're done uh, with this adventure for me to, with me today, thank you for joining me thus far. If you're going to continue along, I get out, get a couple snacks of your own. It's a long and winding road. <laughs> see, you, see you maybe not, maybe later in this video or in another video. Bye. Or ta. <laughs> this ice water can be muddy. <laughs> Don't know where this goes. I've often wondered about it. it. Looks like a trail that's been used. Sometimes there are um, little trails that lead from one village to the next. Sometimes to a farm. Not sure. It needs to be explored. Probably something I'll never get to, given that I'm planning to leave Japan. Not right away, just a couple more years. I guess that's part of the reason I want to turn the camera on like this more. Capture more of the experience, maybe the entire experience of a hike, rather than just bits and pieces. But the price of that, of course, is that you have to suffer through the dull parts. <laughs> just like I do. Although really, uh, Dull is a relative thing, and who can call it dull when you're still breathing? As long as you've got some breath in you. That's pretty interesting. I see a waterfall. And then suddenly you might spy something like that through the trees. It uh, takes a normally dull moment and uh, invigorates it with interest. A waterfall through the distant woods there. Let me uh, check.
change the position of my camera for just a second, sorry. Remind me to uh, check the leeches too. I think I'll do that real quick. I don't see any yet, surprised, because uh, I was up here last week, only uh, probably another 2,000 feet higher in elevation, and I was being ambushed by leeches right and left. Wow, that's a lovely waterfall. Quite large. Let's see. Looks like uh, you can only catch little glimpses of it. It extends, seems to extend quite a ways up. And all the way down. <laughs> but then, <laughs> what, whoa, see, see, now you can get a good view of it. Yeah, I think. See, it just goes up and up and up and up and then it gets lost in the trees. I guess it would be a, a strange thing indeed to have a waterfall that didn't uh, go all the way to the bottom. Some waterfalls don't. I think there are waterfalls that, uh, that uh, it's not that strange. There are waterfalls that, uh, you know, cataracts that plummet over the edge and then uh, evaporate before they ever reach the bottom. I think I've seen stuff like that. Number of homes up here. Don't know really anything about those places. I, there's one up on the hill that really looks... Oh, that's that's the same homestead that we were just looking at. I see a car. So someone's got some activity or interest in the place still, if not living there. But there's a place over here up on the hill that really looks abandoned, although it looks more lived in now than ever before. Yeah, it's just it's hard to tell, huh? This is not the same river that we saw before. This is a, a, a tributary leading off of uh, the canyon from the canyon we're going to explore now. See how the water's clear here? It's not all muddy yet. What is that? We saw a hornet go by, but not the giant. These barriers are here to keep the boars and the bears out. Probably most likely the boars. I don't know why, but I, I got the impression once that this place is abandoned. Although the way the curtains are drawn up like that, Makes me wonder. I think we'll get a better look at it. This place certainly doesn't look like anybody's been doing anything with it. Although the trail is cleared. There's a little bridge to the oyster, uh, to the houses there. Now, here's the picture I've seen. Well, wow. it's nice. There's an old bicycle. Being swallowed by the uh, green. This is all green tea here. Certainly abandoned. No longer this whole hillside. Lots and lots of uh, hornets probably flying around in there. I like this. Look at this. It's the kind of thing that probably in inspires the Japanese the poetry and you know, higher thoughts. Although, are there really higher thoughts? You know, are our. Are our. Who's just speaking here? Are our. Uh, I can't see, but maybe you can. Are our uh, everyday thoughts any less uh, worthy, given the fact that uh, the mere fact that we're alive, and you look behind that curtain, given the mere fact that we're alive and we have, a, have the opportunity to, to, to think them versus the uh, whoa, peek inside. Not much to see in here. What is that? European license plate. See the European Union. Can't be that old. But given the fact that, uh, the al given the alternative of uh, of the uh, of afterlife, when you're when you're gone, any any mortal thought that you have while you're while you're alive, whether it be uh, ephemeral or merely a pedestrian everyday stuff, certainly seems uh, worthy in comparison. What did Thoreau once say about uh, the? Given the prospect of a dead man to to rise in any any state or condition would be a, a I think something about being a being a joy and a wonder you know basically giving an idea that you know we, we lament our our situation at times but uh, think about how eagerly any any dead man would uh, a dead woman for that matter would uh, jump at the chance to to fill your shoes again and uh, would probably give no thoughts at all to the or very little to the challenges that you face. I don't see any access to that house up there. So I think that one little trail was the only one up there, unless there's a small road up here, we'll see. 
Now don't be surprised if we encounter some giant carnivorous leeches. This is the perfect season and the perfect place to find them and uh, the perfect uh, uh, weather. They love to come out in the rain because the rain draws the uh, giant earthworms, their favorite prey, out of, the out of the ground, which they can drown in saturated ground. So the giant earthworms emerge and the giant uh, carnivorous leeches uh, come, out, come out to hunt them, so devouring them whole. It's quite a, quite a titanic battle when you cross that scene. Yeah, no access at all to that house. That footpath must have been the only one. I think that's the fact that made me suspect it as being an abandoned place. Given that fact. Now from here on I really don't know what we'll see. It's been at least eight years since I've been anywhere been up this road. So we're we're exploring together from this point on. This is really an all an abandoned farmland right here. Probably abandoned in the last two years. It's not completely overgrown yet. There's a house up there, probably the farmhouse. Most likely abandoned as well. Looks to be in pretty good condition. What happens usually is that the, uh, well, abandoned isn't the right word, you know, unoccupied or neglected. These fields right here are being tended. Someone's taking care of these. Right here they've been cut. But back there, see the difference? How these are all growing over? There's even a shed back there that's overgrown. The difference being that uh, you know, the, the young people leave, I've told this story many, many times, young people leave, go to the city, leave the oldsters here, who carry on as best they can, slowly, uh, every year, handling less and less uh, of, of their farm. See how this, uh, this is green tea here and this is green tea here. Whoever, probably an old man, maybe two years ago said, how the heck with it, I can't feel, I, can't, I don't have enough energy to do the whole thing. And he gave up on this edge right there. He's just taking care of this part and this part down here. And probably this year, he'll, he's getting tired. He'll say, ah, oh, to heck with it. And he'll stop cultivating this and just take care of that until one day it'll all go back to nature just as uh, those uh, fields up there are. And then one day the whole thing will be uh, just a wall of green. Green tea can actually become like a tree. It's left to its own devices. It'll all become a wall of green. And when it's really, really overgrown and the... the uh, um, the conifers show up, the cedar and the like show up and they begin to cult, you know, grow in the middle of it all. You won't even know that it was green tea. I've many times in the highest elevations come across farms that are so completely overrun, so completely rewild, done in the process of rewilding, that it, it wasn't until hindsight that I realized that I was actually on a farm. In a farm. Well, I guess I was on and in a farm, huh? Okay, now we're entering what I suspect is one of those intermittent periods where we walk until we find something interesting. Oh, sometimes you don't find anything interesting. You just walk and you walk alone. But we've been down that path, haven't we? Oh, that's lovely. Waterfall. Lovely sound. Ooh, land crab. Oh, over the edge. Bye bye. <laughs> That's a female. Males have the uh, larger one pincher's exaggerated size, perhaps for a uh, display. Oh, another waterfall. Or perhaps for fighting, I don't know which one. Oh, there's another one. Running across. You don't have to jump over, I won't, I won't want to see any further. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Gotta watch out, you don't want to step on these guys. The gals, more appropriately. It's the kind of place that uh, usually catches my eye, a clearing like this. Um, anything that's got uh, open sky like that is usually uh, the result of some humans doing some activity. And indeed, it looks like we have something up here passed through the green. Ooh, it's getting warm. What is this? 
Yeah, it's like whatever it is is no longer in service. Let's go take a look. It means I'm gonna have to get wet. These are berries here. These are called uh, Yama Ichigo, the uh, mountain strawberry. They're delicious. There's lots of them. Oh, have to have a take, take a look. See, they're really, really yummy. This one looks like it's been a little rotten on that side. Let's find another one. Uh, you know, I mean, that's what happens. Right? I mean, you know, it's, org it's organic. You know, <laughs> pests and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mmm, delicious. It doesn't have the uh, overwhelming bite of a overwhelming taste of a store-bought produce. The flavor is very subtle, sweet. Oh, big spider. Oh no, big uh, beetle. Let's take a look. Oh, I munched my berry. Lovely, lovely. Order coleoptera. Watch out, guy, there are uh, big spiders here. Oh, there's a cricket. And other big insects, lots and lots of insects. You can just spend your day here looking at the uh, insect life on the leaves. So, there's another one right there kind of hiding. There might be more to see as well. Sometimes it's hard to know. Hmm. Well, I can't stop the camera. Later. <laughs> What's that? Oh, jumping spider. Jumping spider. Salticidae. Eyeballing me. One of the the most numerous type of spider on the planet. Most successful spiders around. Truly, the uh, tigers of the uh, of the spider world. Look how it's uh, it's got those eye, multiple eyes, two big eyes in the front that are able to uh, do that binocular vision thing, just like we do. And it can really eyeball me. Very active, able to solve problems, um, ambush prey, able to do trigonometry. They can uh, jump off of a vertical surface horizontally out, play out just enough line to cause their body to uh, swing down and land right on a, a prey item down below. Let's see if it'll jump on my hand here. And, um, go on you. There you go. Boing, boing. See how it jumps, jumps. You're able to land on a prey item. I mean, actually, you're able to know how much line to play out based on the, uh, let's see if I make this distance there. Hop, hop, hop. See if it'll hop back onto the leaf. Come on, you can do that distance. There we go. Okay, safe and sound. Now let's go see what's up here, shall we? This is kind of fun. You get to see how I really, if you're curious, if anybody was curious, you get to see how I really do things. This is what I do. I walk slowly, stop, play with bugs, look at the landscape, try to see what's going on, munch on berries. Ooh, there's some good ones down here. Look at that. Wow. Look at that one. I think that's a different type. Let's give that a try, yeah? Ooh, look at that. Doesn't that look delish? Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Ooh, so sweet. Mmm, mmm, very, very, mmm. Oh, they're everywhere. This is definitely a leech country here. Let's go find out what's up here. Aha, I know what this is. It's a beekeeper's, uh, it's an abandoned beekeeper's domain. Stepping right on one here. Whoa. Stepping right in one. These are all beehives. Hachino. Sue, I think I'm stepping right in something. What is this? Hachi, what are they called? Hachi no. B is Hachi, and then Hachi no. I think it's Sue is the word for beehive. These are all beehives. It's like a beekeeper's uh, beekeeper's uh, area here. You know, bees. Uh, the topic of bees is a very worthy subject. We talk a lot about uh, bees in every capacity. Everything from the uh, Japanese indigenous bees able to uh, to withstand the assault of the, the great Asian giant hornet to the uh, uh, domestic uh, bees of, uh, domesticated bees of, uh, of or, or can bees really be domesticated? Of, uh, of Europe that were brought in that uh, have no defense against the hornet and suffer prey. Although they make more better, more better quantity of honey, they, uh, they can't survive the attacks of the hornet. So here we have the bees go in, in and out through these 
This is a little opener, see you can open there and let these in and out, I guess. Or that closes this for ventilation, I guess. This is all abandoned. No, there's no longer being used. This area up here is cleared. The farmer clearly has some business up here still, given the way this is all cleared. Oh, there's even a fence over there. So I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna beat a retreat. I've, I've, I've come up through the back way, which so often happens in my, in my adventures. I, uh, I uh, stumble across things from behind, you know, without ever having the chance to see that it's a gated area, which I would never, you know, trespass into a gated area, knowingly, and uh, suddenly find myself on the wrong side of the fence. That once happened, I, I told this story several weeks ago in a video about how my friend Eric Fong and I were doing some urban exploring and wound up on the inside of the uh, Franchise Tax Board in California, the uh, State Tax Bureau, and uh, behind Mmm, so yummy. Mmm. Ah, berries, berries everywhere. On the inside of the uh, franchise tax board. <laughs> you know, the kind of place that probably you would uh, find yourself in jail if they caught us and um, managed to uh, get ourselves out of the, uh, the doors there. To our relief, yeah. Here we are on the other side. The farmer probably wouldn't. Uh, be too terribly upset to find me there. Clearly the, the bee activity is, is a thing of the past here. Although we could be doing fish activity there. There's little fish ponds there. Hmm. Or maybe just being a gentleman, a gentleman beekeeper farmer type of a thing. You leech check. I'm absolutely astonished that I'm not getting any leeches at all. That I'm not, I'm not more than 10 kilometers from the area I was hiking last week. Although, not that much further in terms of, you know, as the crow flies, much further in terms of vertical and inaccessibility. This area is far more likely to see humans here than where I was last week. You don't have to travel far in Japan to travel remote. <laughs> What's that? Uh, flying insect. More delicious berries. I have a, I have three onigiri today, three rice balls, and uh, one bag of uh, kap, kappa ebisin. Kappa ebisin, I hope I'm saying it right. I'm gonna stop after a while and have a snack. Whew, I don't need the umbrella. The sky is starting to clear, check that out. Make a quick over here, I see something moving, could be just Drippy drips. Although, uh, if we're lucky, if we look closely in here, we might find a huntsman spider. They like to, um, although my talking isn't helping, they can sense those sound vibrations. What's that? The big spiders like to uh, hunt on these leaves. Like this. Ambush anything that comes by. And often, when I'm hiking along roads like this, this is exactly how I hike moving so slowly, but usually much more quietly. Maybe I'll be quiet for a second. Let's see if we can find anything interesting. Here we go. Possibly an assassin bug up there. Wily creature. No spiders yet. Wet walls of rock like this are great places too. We won't find huntsmen here necessarily. We will find other things. lustrous uh, abdomen there. She saw me coming and vacated her web. There she goes, there she goes. She'll become huge by September. I mean, utterly immense. Still pretty small. There's another couple of golden orb weavers there. So, oh, what was that? What was that? Another cricket on the leaf right there. 
You can't wear. I think that the hunting and hunting is quick. It's okay. It's a good area here. I'm going to really be quiet now. There was one huntsman right there. Got them to leave. So they really see it. a little bit of its abdomen there. Small, very small. By uh, August, I'm, I'm kind of amazed that we didn't see any. By August, this is a curious flower that is very lovely in bloom, but a little strange looking. By August, there will be uh, huntsmen that are very quite abundant and uh, very, very big. <laughs> Ooh, look at this. Oh, we're going to make it better. Hmm. Oh, boy. Have you guys had enough? Should I turn the camera off? You getting bored? Well, as I've said before, you're in control. Doesn't hurt to leave it on. Now that's interesting. I would uh, be really pretty sure, I don't, I don't know why, but I'd be just about positive that that area down there was once a farm. I don't know why, I've just seen so many of them. And you can kind of begin to pick the contours out. Yeah. I bet that was farming. I bet this was here too. This terraced area right here. This kind of thing that was looking like palm tree. Or whatever. Seems out of place. Yeah, things, things that are out of place sometimes are a good clue. Plants that don't belong. You know, too much more sun than you would expect to see uh, any bits of uh, uh, rubbish like these tires. All of these are clues that uh, someone may have been here and that uh, the object of their enterprise is nearby or underfoot. That's happened to me many times that I haven't realized that I was actually standing in a place of interest. You know, it's, as I said before, so overgrown. That's curious down there, look at that. Look at how there's, it appears that either something's been digging there or something's been plunging, although I don't see anything that the water could plunge off. That, that means, looks like something was digging or excavated by nature. Very hard to know which one, probably the latter. Nice little sort of waterfall there, although you never know, mines, there was a lot of mining up here. Slide right here. 
Look at that over there, really flat. Okay, we'll go just a little bit further. And if uh, I find nothing of interest, I'll probably shut the camera off. I don't know why, I guess it's the uh, an old habit. I want to show you the highlights and save you the boring betwixt stuff. Ooh, there's, that's interesting, look at that. Look at the uh, fungus going off of this dead log. I'm sure that's very soft and rubbery. Oh, I like that. Ah. <laughs> Just a little further, maybe. Walking here, kind of uh, scanning for spiders. Yeah, it looks like it's just more of the same. Continuing on up. Although, hey, wait, there's a, a road going down. Look at that. I'm sure that's a logging road. Yeah, it's a logging road. Okay, everybody. Well, I think I'll go ahead and uh, uh, save you the... Uh, trouble of watching any further. I'll turn the camera on and edit it in back in if I find anything of greater interest. Thanks for staying with me so far. I'm going to stop and get it. Eat an onigiri. Take care. Bye-bye. Better engage the bear bell. See ya. Hey bears. Hey everybody. I'm back. And uh, thank you. Well, if you're still with me, thank you. Uh, we're gonna, I'm turning the camera on again because we're about back to the shrine. It's really nice. The sun's come out. I don't need the umbrella now. And we're going to continue our way uh, back along that little tr road that I, that little footpath I showed you, down through the, the uh, farm fields, down to the river, across the bridge, and we'll go take a look at the, the farm on the other side. I, uh, I guess it's, I'm happy. I'm happy. Look at the mist with the uh, return of the sun, the mist rising off of the grounds. Grounds? <laughs> well, speaking of strange words, I'm, I'm happy for two reasons. I'll tell you the first reason and the second. Well, the first reason, I'm always happy when I get a visit from my old friend, the Gerd. The Gerd is another... What the heck is that? <laughs> well, speaking of... <laughs> That's weird. That's the Gerd. Be quiet, Gerd. What, what, what is going on? That is the Gerd, actually. Um, the Gerd is another uh, instantiation of myself. On YouTube, I have a number of channels, and the Gerd is probably my favorite channel. It's my, it's my weird channel. It's my, uh, where I let the, you know, the, the, uh, the wild fruit of my mind uh, uh, hang low and periodically uh, pluck a few off and uh, share the stuff that usually I should probably keep to my own mind. So up there, I got really tired. It happens whenever I get tired. When my body gets on the edge of fatigue and extreme things, uh, the Gerd invariably pops out, and I make Gerd stuff. And so that that video is titled um, "When I Weren't." Don't recommend it if you're a parent. Don't recommend sending, going over, going over to the GERD channel if you have kids. It's a little bit on the edge. And I don't do, I don't say bad words or anything like that, but it's just, uh, it's another side of me that, you know, kids may not be ready for. Or adults may not be ready for either, but it's there. I had fun and made a great, well, I enjoyed it. You know, really, sometimes the GERD videos are not videos, I'm, I'm not trying to say anything to anybody else, but trying to, trying to just kind of uh, do a little stream of consciousness. And, and sometimes it's, it's a little dialogue that goes back and forth inside my mind. And uh, that one was fun when I weren't. But anyway, I'm also happy because uh, I'm feeling good. I mean, that, that hike, you know, two, three weeks ago, that hike that I just did up to, the, up to that, uh, you know, basically ran out of everything. Isn't this interesting? This is all clogged up. Would have really wiped me out, and it did wipe me out, but I recovered quickly. I think that all the, uh, the good eating, I've been eating better now, eating more, taking my wife's advice regarding uh, nutrition, getting a little more exercise, I'm feeling better. We're passing the shrine now. So here we go, let's take over where we left off at that uh, juncture where I stopped the uh, video. Now I'm going to be quiet a little bit. I don't want to... I don't want to bother people. We're just going to make a beeline through the village and down to the water. Isn't that the beautiful hydrangea? There's that farm with this butterfly. Isn't that lovely? Oh, what was that? It's a big jump right there. Maybe a snake. It seemed like it jumped though. 
some more nice flowers here. Farmer probably planted these. So anywho, um, oh, it feels like another chapter has begun. We're back at the same place, but now, now the rain has stopped, the sun is out. It's beautiful, lovely. In the same house. I once met the uh, son of this uh, couple. They came up that same day I was here. Very nice. I wonder if they'd remember me. Here we go. Char. That farm over there, or the area of the farm. We got all the uh, onions and uh, garlic hanging there to dry. Oh, look at old, uh, look at that old uh, farm pack. I used to sell things like that on my in my store, <laughs> my antique store. Yeah, another part of my life, the old antique days. It can come in handy as a what was that? That experience has come in handy in this part of my life. Because uh, I need to recognize the things that I see. Something my wife has once said, if you don't indulge me in talking about myself for a second, my wife once told me, she says, you know, it's, uh, Kurt, you've been very fortunate in that just about every stage of your life that you've been through has uh, led you to, uh, has given you something that, that you were able to use in, in, in subsequent stages of your life. There's a farmer up there. I wonder if he'll consider me trespassing. He's looking at me. <laughs> Oh, look at that old Kamado cooker, big. I used to feed the big family ones. This guy's a pretty young guy, he's eyeball hunting. All I want to do is get to the river. Oh, look, they got ceramic basin there. There's some beautiful mountains over there. すみません。こっちの。あ、ここ。ここ。はい。どうだ。ああ、はい。あ、わかりました。空いてる。空いてるからね。はい。わかりました。すみません。ありがとうございました。いいお天気ね。ありがとう。What <笑><笑> a pleasant enough guy. There's this, there's this hat right there. ありがとうございます。I I just saw this me about to fly over his head. I knew where it was, but I just wanted to make a little small talk with him and ask his permission to be trespassing here. Here's a shed like we saw in a video uh, last week. Where farmers would come and just sit. Let's look at the beautiful feather. Isn't this all lovely? There he is there. Wow, that's where we were up there with the shrine. Wow, wow, this is so beautiful. Farmers would just kind of put their stuff here, hang out here when the rainstorm comes. Here's the uh, river, all swollen and uh, dark with mud. And then over there, the bridge. We're going to cross that in just a second. Wow. Did you see? Did you guys see all the little uh, stuffed animals he had laid out? He had stuffed animals on the trail. I tried to uh, use the camera to show you a couple of them. Um, he had stuffed animals and laid out there. And he had some magazines, like young women's magazines. I mean, not girly magazines. They were like, you know, you know, like they're cosmopolitan or something like that. I, I mean, he must be using them for something else. I mean, yeah. <laughs> That was a real mystery. I'm not. I'm not implying anything untoward in this gentleman. I'm just saying that he has some. Ex his farm land there was a bit uh, eccentric. Oh, isn't this lovely? Look at this lovely green tea terrace here. Wow! And look, there's an umbrella sitting down there for some reason. Maybe there's a family down there having a picnic. This is an area where families do sometimes find their way up here to have a picnic. I do with my family. It's a favorite. One of the favorite places for me to take. Emily and Yumiko in the summer, and one, about a week away from summer, we'll be coming up and hang out and float down the river. I'll hop in the inner tube, we'll come up with my friend Eric and they, his wife Deiko and their, their daughter um, Hana and their son uh, Seiji. We'll come up here and uh, there are two families and sometimes more families will just hang out. Look at this, a ladder here. 
leading up to this tree. I wonder what this is. Oh, it's plums. It's plums. Oh, gosh. Guys, this is really, really special. Really, really special. If you guys, if you guys hang hung out to the end, you know, through all that boring stuff in the middle, I mean, this really just shows how life is. To me, this is the kind of thing that just makes me smile on the inside. I come beaming out. This is a plum tree. Now, the thing is, these plums will not be allowed to ripen to, to maturity. They will be, they're ready to, they're ready to pick right now. They're, and that's why the ladder's right here. It's being, it's being used. The farmers are coming down here, and I don't want to linger long. I don't want them to think I'm picking these. But do you, you know what these are for? Do you have any idea? I'm sure a lot of you do. A lot of you know exactly what these will be used for. <clears throat> that's right, umeboshi. That's right, these uh, plums, which are very small. Look, look at this. Give this size. I don't want them to think I'm taking these. These guys are very tart, very hard. The uh, farmers will come down, they'll pick these, they'll have this ladder, that's why it's sitting right there. Climb up here, I've seen husbands and wives doing this together. Here's another one here. And they'll pick these, uh, pick these plums and then take them back to the farm and uh, use the very old Japanese uh, methods of, uh, of pickling to create delicious homemade umeboshi. And sometimes you can uh, buy these umeboshi from their stands that they have out on the side of the road. I mean, they're the best umeboshi. Any umeboshi you can come, come to Japan, you go to the supermarket, you buy those mass-produced ones, no, they, got, they got nothing. They got nothing on these. I mean, because the people that make these things, they have no, you know, they, they, there's no caution in regards to the amount of salt that they use or anything. They just do, they do it to flavor, to taste, you know. It's not an economic thing. It's, it's a taste thing. And they are absolutely delicious and fresh. And when I see them, they're typically 100 yen for a bag. I buy as many as I possibly can and I take them back and... Uh, parade into the house to my wife and say, look what I've got, umeboshi mana from the mountains of, of, of Japan. And she's always delighted to see, she knows how happy I am. But I'm trying to you know, enjoy umeboshi in measured doses these days, given my health. But, um, but I want to stay healthy, but there you go. I mean, to me, to me, this is, this is worth, this is the highlight of the whole video. You know, seeing, seeing something like that. Maybe that doesn't. Maybe it doesn't mean as much to anybody else. But for me, because because umeboshi for me are one of the things that uh, um, are so Japanese. It's, it's such a Japanese thing. And maybe I don't know. Maybe it came from China, but I don't know. But for me, it's Japanese. It's it's a hallmark of it. And and eating having having a bowl of steaming rice so hot that it'll burn your mouth as you as you as you put it in your mouth with a big red umeboshi on the top is just is just to me the best. And I think there's a man up there, maybe harvesting something. The farmer. Let's go see. Or maybe he's harvesting the umeboshi. Oh, see how they're down here? Go down here. Konnichiwa! Sumimasen! Iyo tenki desu ne! Kore wa ume desu ka? So, so. Ah, umeboshi no? So, so. Ah, so desu ka. Wakaremashita. So, dakara chisai desu ne. So, kore tota ala desu ne. Oh, oh, so desu. Mite ii? Ame, ite ii desu. Oh! Oh, look at this guy, see, see, hora, this is uh, this is it, this is it, he's just harvested the umeboshi in this, in this basket, all of these, talks on this, kono zenbu wa kono ki kara, zenbu wa, wow, it's a talks on ki, ne, wow, omoshiroi desu, oh, wow, oh, honto ni nihon shu desu, sumimasen, arigatou gozaimashita, sumimasen, ah, watashi wa amerika jin desu, ah, watashi no, demu, say, ah, iei wa shizoka shi desu, so this, yeah. So yeah, yesterday night he eats some more Yamano Hoi Iki Miki Tai. I was on full. Yeah. So, this this fish is okay, right? Okay, okay. Is it okay? Is it okay? No. Okay. 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 Isn't that great? So, so he, we got to see him actually. He had picked it. So I asked his uh, permission. You know, my Japanese is really faulting, faultingly poor, and uh, it's terrible. But you know, I asked him permission to cross the bridge. Um, I've crossed it many times, but you know, it's nice to it's nice to ask that kind of stuff. There he is back there, taking care of that one of the local farmers. You know, again, you'll you'll rarely see any farmers over the uh, over a certain age out here. They just uh, not a lot of them. Here's the bridge. Let's go ahead and go across. Now there's two routes around. There's that route. But I think this route is the main route over here. I don't like to uh, widen trails unnecessarily. Let's take a look at this from the underside. There you go. I uh, took, uh, I've taken several people who have visited me here and across this bridge. Um, some of you may remember when, uh, the most recent of which was uh, uh, another YouTuber, Mick, of Mick and Fumi fame. 
he and uh, Fumi came to visit, and we went across this bridge, and when we did, here's green tea, kind of going wild, no one's cutting that, this, no one's cut that this year, it should have been cut last month. Um, and when we did, we crossed it, there, were monkey, there was monkey poop, what was that? Monkey poop on the bridge, ah, here's some, probably right there, probably monkey poop right there. And uh, we were, Mick and I were joking about the monkey poop song, yeah, there's lots of monkeys up here, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Here we go, across the footbridge. I uh, have so many. And there's our farmer over there. Uh, he's, he's going at it. I have so many happy memories from this beach. You know, I don't show a lot of my family in my videos. And that's largely because... Oh, Suzumi Bachi, do you see it right there? Suzumi Bachi on the bridge. I'm... There's a Suzumi Bachi right there. I can't quite see if you guys can see it. I can't, it's too bright. It's right under the bridge. It's practically under my feet, the Asian giant hornet. This is the third one for the day. Can you see it? I, it's too, my, 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 my viewfinder thingy has is, is been covered with the rain splat and stuff. I can't see anything. There's Suzumi, there might be a nest right underneath me. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. No, there it is, there it is. It's right on the bridge now. Wow. This is making up for the lack of, for the tantalizing bit of Suzumi that you saw before. Go ahead and leave my umbrella right here. I think that's safe. Where'd that hornet go? Yeah, probably step carefully if the hornet's nest is under the bridge. I wouldn't want to disturb them. So anyway, this beach right here. By the way, like I said, I, when I first came to Japan and started making these videos, my wife wasn't very comfortable with being on YouTube, and so I kind of turned the camera off. Emily didn't care back then, and now it's kind of the reverse. Yumiko doesn't really mind so much, but Emily's of an age now where she doesn't. She's more hesitant to be on camera. You know, she's you know, so reasonable. You know, so I don't really. I come up here, but so anyway, I'm prefacing that to saying how many adventures I've had here with my family. Probably the most, the one that really stands out. There's a video way back on this channel where Emily and I came here and we had a fire right down there. Just the two of us, Mommy was doing something. We stayed up here until, until evening. We, we cooked a dinner in the fire. We roasted marshmallows. We talked and we had fun. We had the camera on intermittently. Emily made up the, the, the song to yell at the crows to tell them to go away. They were trying to eat our food. And, karasu, baka, 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 karasu. Something, you know, urusai, go away. It was the cutest thing. There's a video back there somewhere. And if I if I can remember, I'll try to link link it. It's one of my favorites. It's one for the for the Papa, not the Saki Papa, but for the Papa memory banks. And we used to cross on this bridge. I remember one time we were playing. We used to we'd go up here with our raft, and Eric and I would get in our big this tiny little raft. Two grown men on the tiny little raft. And the delight of our children, Eric and I would float down here and pass here and tip over right around here and go floating down. We played with a rubber ball. One time the rubber ball got stuck up here. I remember that. I had to come up here and knock it down. <laughs> oh, this is becoming a reminiscence fest. What's that? A robber fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tiger. They're pretty bold. They can get pretty close because they're pretty tough. Yeah, they will kill other things. So here we are. And, uh, Monkeys are that away. Yes, indeed, monkeys, and uh, but not a lot, too much of interest other than the monkeys, which I don't hear any today. And here's the farm. I won't go up there. This is an actively worked farm. The farmhouse and everything is over there. Mainly we came across to go on the bridge, but I will go across at least far enough so you can get a good look of the uh, village of the Long Bear. You know, that'll be, if there's any village, when I go back to the States and I, I live my life, resume my life back in the States, and uh, if there's ever a time that I am I come back, I have a chance to come back to Japan and maybe retire in a village. Um, there's a couple that would be close in my mind. Probably if I was alone, I would become a hermit in the uh, deeper mountains, some of the abandoned farms up there. But if I'm able to come back and, and be a family man, maybe with my wife, I mean certainly with my wife, um, and if my, maybe with my daughter, if she's grown and interested, then this would probably be the one. We're about 40 minutes out of uh, Shizuoka City. You could easily commute. You could easily live in one of these houses. I mean, by, by Japanese standards, a 40-minute commute is, is like uh, impossible. It's amazing. Few, so few of them are willing to do that kind of thing because they're, they're used to a different type of standard. But from Southern California, a 40-minute commute where I'm coming, that 40-minute commute's nothing. 
And this is not a 40 minute commute in, in LA traffic. This is 40 minute commute driving on beautiful scenic roads like this with almost no traffic at all until the very end. And you could live in one of these houses. I'll bet you you could get a house like that or like that over there. Out here in these mountains, I'll bet you could get it for, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess $500 a month you could rent. And that's probably on the high end. More likely, you know, just a couple hundred bucks a month for something like that. And you would you would probably have access to, oh, there, see, there's a cemetery I was talking about. I, I can't get to it, but it's up there. There's a temple up there, too. And the people put, the Japanese put their cemeteries like that above the village in order so that the spirits of the ancestors can look down and watch, as we're doing, watch over the activity of their descendants over the centuries. Isn't that a nice idea? So you could, and, and get, get this, and it would probably be free water, um, although it may not be as, as clean. It's, yeah, you'd probably, we have, I know some old people who live up there like this and they have to filter their water, but probably be free. If I have it flowing through, you'd have running water through the system. Maybe you could have a well. Um, your biggest expenses maybe be the couple hundred bucks, you know, 500 bucks a month or so for rent and then the utilities. In many cases, you can get it for free. I mean, I know there are places like, some of these places, like these really old ones like this, I mean, I've heard of places like this going where they're basically free. The village just gives it to you. Nobody wants to live there. They, they're glad to have somebody just to keep the roof from falling in. Or, and you can rent, uh, I've heard of this several times. These like land, plots of land. See all these plots of land? These are all farms, farms or farmlands over here. Most of them are starting to go wild because no, the old people don't take care of them anymore. They would gladly let you cultivate that land. There's that man we saw before up there. They would gladly let you cultivate that land for this guy like here. I'm sure he's got some plots of land. He's, you know, he's an old guy and he's just, I'm not criticizing old guys, but he's tired. He looks a little tired, doesn't he? He's looking out. He'd rather uh, he'd just you know, do kind of a gentleman gardener type of a deal and, and he's got some land that's going wild. He kind of feels bad about it, I'll bet. He, he hates to see that happen. He, you know, it's kind of an eyesore. They'd probably let you take the land for nothing or just, a, I've heard of this where it's like a couple of daikon, a giant radish, you know, pay me with you know, five daikon a year and that's your payment. I'm sure that this guy would probably be happy to share his land. I mean, he look how smart he, he was so, so warm and friendly with me, as all the people are up here. And it's all old people. So there you go. I'm starting to sweat <laughs> as the sun came out. Let's go back across the bridge, and then I'll, I'll shut off. And uh, we'll call this, uh, we'll wrap this, this, this experience up, this little trail down there. Let's go back across. Here we go. There's our umeboshi farmer over there. You really get it wobbling here. Okay, don't forget my umbrella. <laughs> it's wobbling like a, like a ship on the ocean here. I've got a, a really good synchroniz sync in synchronization, not an in-sync. Oh, there we go. <laughs> hey, that'd make a good still photo. Ooh. I can just hold still long enough. I wonder if that's why they call it a still photo. Because it's really a hold still photo. If someone kept you know, they're making photos and I said, guys, I want to take a photo of the family. You just all hold still. <laughs> Everybody be still. <laughs> well, geez, hard to be still when it's walking like this. Whoa. <laughs> There's the farm. Okay, well, the farmer up above there, it looks like he started up some motorized gizmo. You can hear a little bit of that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, let's go on down to the water and then we'll shut off. I really got that thing moving now. Can you see? There we go. <laughs> oh, see, see, look, look, look at this. This is farm. Okay, this farmland over here. This is one patch after another, just all going to weeds. Just all going to weeds, all the way along there. You could, you could come up here. I mean, like I said, I had one of the farmers actually offer offer, invite me to come live here. He said, you want to you live here? we got plenty of empty houses, like I said at the start of the video. Come here, probably, you know, rent the place for 500 bucks a month, and then um, get, you know, a couple plots of land like this, have a job teaching uh, English in Shizuoka, commute, uh, commute my 80-minute uh, commute round trip a day, start my mornings with the bird song, finish them uh, Finish them in the evening with the cicadas, the mountain cicadas, and the sound of water. Walk in the hills, enjoy the uh, pleasant chat with my neighbors, and uh, thus would be uh, a life 
that I would uh, I would not complain of too readily or or, or headily. Can I say that word headily? Is that true? Do I mean heedily? What do I mean? I don't know. I guess I mean it's time for me to uh, to sign off. Oh, that's nice. Another uh, another two weeks or so. It'll be perfect for swimming. This water will be crystal clear. It'll be great. We'll come up here. Emily will bring her little mask. I'll bring the raft. Invite uh, Eric and Reiko and the family to come up. It's our annual thing. Enjoy ourselves. I'm gonna sign off from now, everybody. Let you all look at the uh, look at the water as I say goodbye. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Make it a great day wherever you are. As I as I tell the kids at my school where I work, I do a a, a daily well a television program every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I always finish this program and I say. I say to the kids, study hard, but most of all, have fun and enjoy life. It's short, make the best of it way you can, and enjoy the, uh, enjoy the, the wonder that is around you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. But wait, there's more. Here it is. Hey, everybody. I'm walking through a village here in Japan. Look at these really beautiful houses. Anyway, this is part of a bigger video that I'm making. I was kind of all done filming, but I, I saw this from a distance. I wanted to show it to you and say, I think this counts as a bonsai. A Japanese, uh, you know, miniature trees. Isn't this nice? Look at that. It's pretty big for a bonsai, but I think it counts. Tanuki. One, two, three, four. Four tanuki statues. That's on a big oil drum. Very uh, nice. Here at the uh, front of there's the farmer probably, there's the guy that did it right there. It's his far, little farm there. Nice little bonsai. Oh, it's got a big old uh, post box there. Seems to be a character of some sort. Oh, that's nice, wow. I'll well, have to leave the camera on for a second. Let me go a little more at this little village here. The only village that I know this is the only village I know that I, you know, all that farmland is basically gone back to. You know, it's, it's all going back to nature. The only village I know that has a house with some kids in it. Look this one. Look further up. The only way I can tell is that the laundry sometimes happens. Uh, that big frog. Children's uh, clothes hanging. There it is right there. There's that big bullfrog. So I can't hold it quite steady. I don't see any kids close today, but in the past I have one. I see basketballs and stuff. So I think there's actually kids there, which is kind of surprising because the schools have closed up in there. But I can't imagine where the kids go to school. There are literally no, no schools nearby for them. Kind of a passing out of the visit village now. There's some farmers over here. They're harvesting umeboshi, I think. Umeboshi <laughs> desu Oh, <笑>いいね、梅、日本の梅干しは美味しいです。梅干したくさんできます。写真撮っていい? あの、黄色の梅干しも。あ、そうですか。あ、見ていい。頭。あ、はい、はい、わかりました。頭。どこ、あ、あそこ。英語の学校の先生でも。あ、そうです。あ、そう。そうです。ここの中学校。あ、あ
いや撮影の仕方がわからない。<笑>はい、そ,うそうすればさ、とどね、ね、せっかくあれだから、はい、それはいいよ。いいですか？すみません、はいはいはい、ありがとう、お、ありがとうね、<笑>すみません。いいですか？お、いいですよ、やった、ありがとう、やってますか？そうあ。大丈夫ですね。あ、そう。はあ、すごい。あ、良かったです。<笑>ありがとうございました。あ、ちょっとすみませんね。いいいい<笑>バスでいらっしゃった。あ、車で。あ、車でね。車、車そう、あ、ちょっとあそこ。<笑>あ<笑>この村はなな長長熊長熊長熊あそあそうですかいいお名前ね長熊長熊,長熊ロングベアね<笑>そうそうロングベアいや面白いです<笑>あちょっとごめんなさいすみませんはい,い,い,い,い,い,い,い,い,いありがとうあ、はい、ありがとうすみませんありがとうございましたさよならありがとうさよなら。Well, that was a nice experience. <laughs> I wish I could have helped him reach up further to, to get it. <laughs> I got all wet. At least I helped him. I got it, helped him get some of the taller ones. And uh, if I was, you know, dumb. I think she was a little nervous. I handed her the camera. She didn't know that it was already running. She wasn't sure how to turn how to turn it on. So I was. And uh, so there we go. Oh, here, look at this. I showed these ones before in a, in a video that I made last New Year's where I was. Came up here in the middle of the night, and uh, oh, nice butterfly! And there were a deer moving in the wood in, in the bushes right over here. Look at this butterfly. Lovely. And there were deer right over there. I saw them in the headlights of the car, and um, these, you know, I mistakenly addressed these as World War II era, and uh, people in comments, you know, corrected me and said those are not World War II era. I really don't know what they are. I didn't. I don't even know what that is. But they've been there forever. So anyway, here's my car. And the little whirly gigs. They have to keep the crows away. That was fun. We got to see our little, um, our little, uh, um, ah, bonsai and more. There's a little farm woman up there. Okay, there's my car parked by the, where she's headed. Sign off for now is the uh, sweet bird song serenades our our farewell. Bye bye. Okay, guys. I thought I'd just uh, turn the camera on one little bit. There was that little bit at the end there. I turned it on to see the uh, the bonsai and make a separate video, but I just throw it on in and have that little nice little. <laughs> I left my umbrella at the women's tree, and they came racing after me to give it to me. I felt so bad. I wish I'd had more. I gave some. Uh, I went back and gave some uh, nodoame, some cough drops. Japanese love cough drops here. Um, to that one man. I wish I had more to give to those women. So anyway, I wanted to show you. This is the entrance to the village. You wouldn't really know that it was here. This is here's the main road. It goes across this bridge. And then there's this little road behind me that I'm departing from. I'll be very careful here. You can see, look out the window. I hardly know it's there. Okay, I'm looking forward here. I'll put this on the dashboard. And this is the road out of the mountains now. We're leaving the uh, the village of the Long Bear and uh, heading back towards civilization. So I'll back towards the little one lane roads here. Take care, everybody. That's it for me. I'm really going to sign off for now for good. Thank you for joining me for this long uh, uh, morning adventure here in the village of the Long Bear. Take care. Bye bye. Have a great day. Be safe. I'll turn off and be safe. <laughs> See ya.